tonight, we have Tyler Sully in the house. The thing I love about Tyler is when he, when he said, yeah, I'll come, the first thing, the second thing he said out of his mouth was simply, you know what, I love Northwest. I love Northwest students, and I'll be there in a second. I would do anything for them. And that's the sort of guy that we have. You don't need, we don't need someone who's just an incredible preacher like Tyler is, or incredibly good looking like Tyler is. You want someone who actually cares about us, who knows us, who's been where we're at. And so tonight, would you please help me welcome the one and only Tyler Solly. Thank you. How's everybody doing tonight? Anybody still need healing from the Seahawks? Well, so let's not talk about that. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Is there any uh, Patriots fans in the house? Because you can just go ahead and stand up and leave now. No, I'm just joking. Hey, it's good to be back with you guys. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm chapter 42. And, uh, you know, these, these moments, um, what I love about the God that we serve is that he uses moments. Everybody say moments. Moments are significant in our lives. And uh, our lives are, are literally made up of a collection of moments. And when we learn to yield ourselves to what he would say and what he would want to speak to us, moments become significant. And I want to encourage you to approach the next number of days as an opportunity, a moment for you to encounter what he has for you. The fact, as Christian said earlier, that he's been pursuing you. This thing called Christianity is a response to what he's done for us. And uh, so tonight, my prayer, as I've been thinking about you guys for a number of weeks now, is that uh, God would have his way with us tonight in this place. So thankful for Pastor Phil and Brenda. Love you guys. And uh, Christian, Pastor Christian, Christian. And uh, man, so many friends. And uh, Psalm 42, here we go. Are you there? Psalm 42. I think we have big digital Bibles now, a days. When I was at Northwest, we had overheads, people. So be thankful. Some of you guys don't even know what overheads are, but that's okay. We had somebody with a special gift mix who like slid the paper up so you know where you were at in the words. But some of you guys don't even know. Don't even know. Psalm chapter 42, verse 1. It says this, As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Once again, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long. The psalmist here is talking about this yearning, this desire, this craving, this thirst to be with the God who loved him and knows him and is pursuing him. I thirst for you, O God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? The next few minutes that we have together tonight, I want to share a message with you simply entitled Thirsty. Thirsty. Let's pray together tonight. Jesus, I thank you that you are in this place. Lord, we didn't come to be entertained. Uh, we didn't come to just pass some time, but Lord, we, we came to hear from you. Lord, I pray that the position of our hearts would be just like the verses that we read, that our souls would long and thirst for you. Holy Spirit, open up our ears, open up our hearts to receive everything you would desire to say to us tonight in this place. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Anybody here in the house ever been desperately thirsty? I'm not talking about like, you just had a little bit of cotton mouth, you were slightly parched, you know, you were up in the workout center and you just like, you know, curled some 15 pound dumbbells and you got like up to seven reps and you needed to go to the water fountain. I'm talking about you were desperate to drink some water. As you, uh, you know, some of you probably know this uh, about me, I'm not a bodybuilder. I know that's shocking. Some of you are like, really? You, you hide that well. Um, 
No, I, I actually, one of the things that I like to do, I like to run. I, God built me with the frame of a runner. People are not surprised by that often, Kramer, when I tell them that I run. They're like, yeah, you're a skinny white guy. You look like a runner. So anyways, a number of years ago, my wife and I, we, we took up running. And one hot summer afternoon, I decided to go out for a long run. And by the time I got home, I, I, I'm not one of those people. You ever seen those like speed walker ladies who have like the little water bottle with the wrist strap and they're like... You know what I'm saying? That's, that's not me. I'm not that guy running. I'm the guy with like the game face on when I'm running. No water bottles, no nothing. Just clothes. But um, I get home, I walk through the front door, and it was hot, it was humid. I am dying of thirst. And thankfully, I have a gracious wife. Any married people in the house? Side note, some of you young men in the house, you might want to write this scripture down. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Go ahead and circle that word, Proverbs, I believe, 1822. So some of you guys are like writing that on their arm right now. Oh my gosh, good thing. Okay. Anyways, I found a good thing. I walk through the front door of my house and she sees how thirsty I am and she walks over to the cupboard and at this point we have, you know those Starbucks hard plastic cups, the, the tumbler ones with the big, big green plastic straws? She goes over to the fridge and like gets some ice. She grabs the Brita water filter and begins to pour and I'm just like, sweat is running off me. I'm just like, oh, I'm dying. Thank you God for a incredible wife. She walks over and graciously hands me this cup of water. And I take the deepest breath because I'm about to down this thing in one drink. And as I prepare my mouth to inhale the contents of this, I notice how clean and crisp and pristine the water is that resides inside of this cup. Because it's clear and I can tell what's in it. And as I begin to draw the water through that straw, my mouth begins to fill with this overwhelming sensation and I pause because there is this gritty, sticky, moist stuff in my mouth now. And I am like, I am panicking at this moment because whatever was in the cup was not actually in the cup, but now it's in my mouth. And I'm trying to figure out what on earth is going on here. And in that moment, my gag reflex reminded me of why it existed. And I run and literally, I unload whatever was in my mouth. And I come back and I look inside of the straw. my own wife. <laughs> and I notice the remnants of a smoothie that my children had enjoyed a couple weeks prior. <laughs> and to use the word disappointed is such an understatement. I could not believe what had ended up inside of my mouth. You see, what I expected in that moment was ice cold, refreshing, pure. What I got, not so much. You see, there's nothing worse than having a huge thirst only to realize that what we needed to meet our thirst is incapable of doing so. You see, the funny thing about thirst in our lives, there's been times where I've played sports and I'm thirsty and I, I go and drink something, but the weird thing is the next day, guess what? I wake up and I'm thirsty. You see, thirst is this continual thing that shows up again and again and again in our lives. It's, it's those moments where I'm always hungry and so what do I do? I eat and I'm satisfied for a while. But the interesting thing, even after I eat that big Thanksgiving meal, I'm still hungry the next day. You see, we all have this appetite inside of each and every one of us. And my question for us tonight is this, is where do you find yourself going to meet the thirsty needs of your soul? Where do you find yourself going? 
You see, in John chapter 7, we, we read this interesting account of Jesus, and there's this feast going on in Jerusalem. It's the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Bible makes it clear that on the last day, as the processions and the celebrations have gone on now for multiple days on end, Jesus stands up and says something. And as this is going on, it says in verse 37, on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And we hear these words and go, oh, that's nice. But understand the significance of what is going on around Jesus in this moment. Because during this festival, during this celebration, the priests would literally parade down to the pool of Siloam with a golden pitcher. And they would draw up water from the pool of Siloam. Again, thousands of people crowded around, thousands of people coming to celebrate and commemorate. And as the festivities are going on, they're declaring some of the Psalms. And all this is going on, all the people are celebrating, all the people are remembering God's provision of water for the Exodus people. When God said to Moses, Moses, speak to the rock and water flowed. Strike the rock and water flowed. And the priest would then begin to make his way back up to the temple. And he would pour out the water. Prophetically speaking of someday the Messiah will come and a river of living water would flow from this place to the world. And as that is taking place, as that is happening, Jesus stands up in the midst of all of this and Jesus shouts out, Hey, if anyone is thirsty, come to me. If anyone believes in me, I will give you living water. In fact, within you will flow streams of living water. See, we got to understand, we got to remember that humanity is designed with a neediness that is meant to point us to God. There is a built-in thirst mechanism in your soul and in my soul, and it's meant to point us to the one who can satisfy. But the challenge is how often do we allow that neediness, that thirst, to point us towards something else that will never actually satisfy? See, I'm amazed at how often we we seek out satisfaction in, in those things that fall short never meet our needs. We we allow the neediness of our souls to point us to something other than the one who came to meet our need and our thirst. See, we've got to recognize the only solution to our unlimited neediness is an unlimited Savior. The only solution in my life, my unlimited neediness. You ever met somebody who just seemed a little bit needy? Come on, you know who I'm talking about. Don't elbow anybody right, right now, but you know who I'm talking about. Needy people. See, the challenge is, listen, none of us want to be defined as the needy person. But until we recognize our neediness, we'll never find the solution to it. Because the truth is, we all have this neediness inside of our soul. Our soul longs to be filled. And Jesus stands up and declares, if anyone, is thirsty, come to me, come to me. See, Augustine said this, the soul is never satisfied until it finds its rest in God. It's never satisfied. We look, we long, we try, we strive, we, we run to things that will never actually fill the void in our lives. How many of you are visual learners? I'm, I'm a visual learner. I'm going to ask Christian to come give me a hand. You see, the truth is, we're needy. And picture with me for a moment, this simply represents your soul, your craving, your longing. 
And what happens is so often, instead of running to the the true source, instead of running and, and finding our needs met in Jesus, the one who declares, listen, if you're thirsty, come to me. What do we do? We, we run to things that are limited. We think they'll satisfy. And so we find ourselves going to things. That's a big pitcher of water. Does the calf know you took that? Because I'm about to call security right now. But listen, we, we settle. We settle for limited. And my question for you tonight, just, just think about this question for a moment. Is desire in your life ever done? Is your desire to be loved ever done? Is your desire to be liked or needed or wanted actually ever done? See, the problem is we run to limited things thinking that they're going to meet our need only to find out that, dude, did you do this? And the very things that we thought were going to satisfy quickly, they, they're diminishing, they're fading away. And so what do we find ourselves doing? We run back to the same thing, thinking, well, I just need more of it. If I just get a little bit more, it'll be all good. And the problem is, the more we go back to these things, the more we run to these things, the more we realize they never fulfill. And so we get in these cycles and patterns called addictions. We're needy. We think it's going to work. It's going to be enough. It's going to meet our needs. See, the truth is, we're needy people. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. So what do we do? We, we run to approval. We, we run to acceptance. We, we find ourselves going, man, if, if I could just get her to go to roomies. Do we still call it roomies around here? Roomies night out. If I could just get her to say yes to roomies. You see, the challenge is, until we found wholeness in ourselves and who we are, we're needy. Our souls are needy. Some of you, you, you might not like hearing that. You might be kind of offended. Um, that's, that's okay. You don't have to invite me back next year. It's all right. I love you. But we're needy. See, we, we look to these things. We think, man, if I just have the right person in my life, if I, if I just am loved enough, if I just find contentment in this moment, but the truth is that contentment might last for a moment, but it quickly fades, doesn't it? It drains, passes away. And things that we were looking to and running to, all of a sudden we find ourselves in these patterns called addictions and we can't figure out why we can't shake free, but it's because we continue to run to things that are limited in their ability to fill the void and gaps in our lives. So we think if we just do enough shopping and and have the latest clothes, but come on, how far ahead of the next wave can you actually stay? So we eat and we do drugs and we return to the screens to look at images, thinking that if we just find momentarily, that'll be enough. And so we find ourselves addicted to images on a screen, on a computer, and thinking, well, well, it'll, it'll satisfy, it'll get better with time, it'll change, and it never actually meets the need, does it? But our soul's still looking for something. Oh, it's still needy. It's still longing for approval, for acceptance, for, you know what's scary about things that we settle for as well, things that can kind of fall into this category? It's religion. Because often we can be guilty of treating God's love as transactional. God, if I do this, if I worship the right way, if I read my Bible enough, if I pray, if I'm in leadership, if I do these things, then God will love me, accept me, approve of me more, not recognizing that his love for you is one way. The Bible says while you were still sinners, Christ died for you. 
And yet we continue to run to things like religion thinking, if I just do things in the right segment, I'll get more of God's favor. If I just put things in the right order, if I just get enough consecutive days where I don't screw up, then just maybe my soul won't be so needy anymore. So we use religion as something that we run to. Not recognizing we're empty. But what do we do? We keep running back, don't we? We keep running back. See, the problem with each of these is, is we try to allow them to become the main thing that we run to. And anytime we make lesser things the main things, the Bible calls that idolatry. So we run to these idols thinking that in them we'll find purpose, meaning, contentment, fulfillment. But for some reason, we're never satisfied. We're never satisfied. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, it says this, For my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug themselves cracked cisterns that hold no water at all. Jeremiah is speaking under the inspiration of God to the people of Israel who had rejected God, and not just rejected God, but chose to embrace idols to try to fulfill their desires. It was like running to a cracked sister and trying to hold something that would never hold anything at all. And how, much, how many of us can identify with that tonight, that we've settled for limited things? As you consider your life tonight, do you find yourself continually empty, continually looking for more, seeming like it never works? Why doesn't my faith work? Why doesn't it seem to? Maybe it's time for us to run to Jesus as he would stand and declare tonight just like he did those years ago. If anyone is thirsty, come to me. If anyone is thirsty, Come to me. Here's the trick, though. We can't just replace the idols in our lives by simply turning away from something. We have to turn towards something. More specifically, we have to turn towards someone. See, in my life, it's not just enough to, if, if my pattern was, was porn, it was drugs, it was whatever, it's not enough just to turn away from the actions. I have to choose to turn towards something, and more specifically, I have to choose towards someone, which is an unlimited Savior. His name is Jesus. You see, that's the solution for us tonight. We, we find satisfaction in the unlimited, which is Jesus. Anyone who's thirsty, come to me. Anyone who is thirsty. You see, in Jesus, we find unlimited. And when our lives are actually hidden in Christ, we find fullness. We, we don't have fracture or brokenness any longer because our lives are hidden in Christ. All of a sudden, we come to him and we find everything we're looking for. We find everything our heart and our soul have been looking for. And in fact, let's just go ahead and keep going here. Because Jesus said this, that those who come to me it will begin to what? Overflow. You see, the solution to a thirsty world is not us just walking through some more religious things, not just us having a form and denying the actual power, but what will transform and become a source to the world around us, a source to our city, a source to our family, is when we come to the place where we recognize, I can't keep running to limited things thinking they're going to fulfill the needs of my life. I have to run because I have unlimited neediness. I need an unlimited savior. And I need to find my solution in him. And when he becomes the solution in us, listen, the Bible says, he says himself that the spirit in you will become like a river of living water. Bringing life to the dead areas of this city. Bringing life to the dead areas of this campus. Bringing life to the dead areas of your family, of your workplace. Bringing life to those who need it. If anybody is thirsty, if the band will come. You see, in Jesus, we find the satisfaction that our hearts are longing for. In Jesus, we become a source to others. How many of us would recognize tonight, man, we've settled for running to 
limited things. Some of us, listen, we're so caught up in religion and we've told ourselves that God's love for us is this transactional love. So we tell ourselves, well, I'm doing really good right now in my faith because I've checked off enough boxes on my reading list. And then when things aren't necessarily going that well, we feel bad. It's amazing how often we swing from pride to despair instead of being confident in who we are in Christ. Confident in our position. See, the scary thing about that is it's not rooted in what I've done, it's rooted in what he's done for me. I have no control. All I can do is respond. All I can do is respond. And tonight, my call and my challenge is simple. If you're thirsty tonight, and you've been chasing limited things, come on, you've been looking for fulfillment in a relationship, you've been looking for love and affirmation, you've been looking for fulfillment in your religious pursuits, you've been trying to climb the, the ladder of, man, if I could just get enough retweets or enough likes or enough followers on Instagram, who, who cares? You kidding me? Come on, let's be honest for a moment. You ever set a number, well, if I could just have this many, and then you hit that and you're like, okay, what's next? Our hearts are never satisfied. The soul, the craving of the soul, the thirst of the soul is never satisfied until we are satisfied in an unlimited Savior. And Jesus stands and he declares the same thing to you and to I. If anyone is thirsty, come to me. And listen, we're not here to play a game, we're not here to entertain. Listen, if you're thirsty for the real thing, he's here. And so let's allow him to fill our broken lives. Let, allow him to replace the cracks and the flaws and the fractures. Let's run to him. Allow him to meet us. Allow him to fill us. Would you stand with me all across this place tonight? our world needs some people who are willing to be sent. But it's hard for us to be sent and be a source to someone if everything is draining out and leaking. We're a broken cistern. We're a cracked cistern. God wants you to be a source. And tonight, if you'd say, you know what? I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for the living water. I'm thirsty, Jesus. Lord, I've been, I've been chasing after things that are limited. And even some of them, maybe they've been veiled in religion. They've had a form of Christianity around them. But the truth is, you find your heart tonight longing to be filled. Come on, tonight's your night. If that's you, you'd say, man, Tyler, that's me. Would you simply raise a hand right now? Because I want to pray for you. And we're just going to respond. Some of you, you might want to find a place up here to come and pray. And I know there's some of the leadership team that would love to pray over you. But we're going to take the next few moments. We're done early. I I timed it. We got done early just so we could respond. But listen, we came all the way here. We might as well get everything that God has for us. If anyone is thirsty, let them come to me. Let them come to me. Jesus, you see every hand, you see every heart that is longing. God, you see every heart that's been broken through patterns of addiction. Lord, they want to turn, they want to change, they they want to be full in life. And they continue to run back to things that only leave them thirsting for more. God, I pray that tonight in this place, addictions would be broken in Jesus' name. God, that chains that have bound young men and young women from their early teenage years, God, let them be free tonight. God, your word declares, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And Lord, tonight we make the choice to run to you. God, our souls are thirsty for you, the living God, the living water. So Lord, I pray that tonight you would meet us in this place. 
And God, even tonight, as, as we begin to worship you, as we begin to lift our hands, Lord, I pray that your presence would begin to flow out in this place tonight like a living river of water. God, that you begin to wash away the old. God, that you begin to strengthen us to live in the fullness and newness of life that you came to give. Lord, we don't want to stand at a distance. Lord, we don't want a dried up reality. Lord, I pray that we would walk in the fullness of who you are. God, I pray that our lives would be a source. God, a source to a dry and thirsty world. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill us and flood us to overflowing tonight. God, that as we interact with people in our city, as we interact with co-workers, as we interact with neighbors, God, that our lives would be a source of life to them. Lord, not because of us, but because of your Spirit moving in us and your Spirit moving through us. So God, I pray that you would come tonight that you'd meet us in this place. Come on, tonight, if that's you, and say, Tyler, I'm thirsty. Man, I'm dry. I'm broken. Tonight, if that's you, I, I, I want to encourage you to step out from where you are. Find a place up here to come pray. Come on, partner with somebody in prayer. We're going to begin to worship and sing this song. And let's simply just respond. Even as they begin to sing this next song, let's respond to what God is wanting to do in us and through us. Come on, we don't have to settle for the limited. We don't have to keep running back to things that will never actually satisfy. God has designed us with a thirst that is meant to push us to pursue Him, the true and the living water. And so, Lord, tonight we run to You. God, we're thirsty for You. God, would You come and would You fill us in this place tonight? In Jesus' name. That's, he's with us. He's with you. He's for you. And listen, one of the things that in, in moments like this, in, in response times like this, is we can find ourselves being so shackled with, with shame and with guilt and with condemnation. Even finding ourselves going, man, I, I should be more thirsty, but there's just so much wrong. And listen, if you are Christ, there is no condemnation. You're in Christ. Understand, tie that thought in Romans 8, 1 to what Paul says earlier in Romans chapter 7. I'm pretty good at sinning is basically what he's talking about. But he goes on, he says, but praise God, the answer is in Jesus Christ. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Tonight, I, I want to pray for those of you who feel like you're just under this weight, past decisions. Listen, do not let a decision that's in the past be more significant than what Jesus has done for your past, present, and future. It's time to allow the shame and the guilt to be peeled off of you. But what do we do? We tell ourselves, well, I deserve to feel this way. I need to pay for this. If that was God's plan, he wouldn't have sent Jesus to the cross. Jesus purchased our freedom and forgave our sin. So tonight, if you're feeling condemnation, if you've been walking under a cloud of guilt, even on the sunniest, most beautiful day in Kirkland, why is it always more beautiful in Kirkland than other areas? I don't understand this, but it's the truth. Yet even on the most beautiful days in Kirkland, you find yourself like Eeyore, walking through life, down, guilty, depressed, ashamed of something that Jesus has already put under his blood. It's time to be free. It's time to be free. You see, when we experience a freedom like that, you know what? Our cravings begin to change because we experience the real source. We 
experience the real thing that our hearts have been longing for. And tonight I'm believing that there's going to be some people who you literally walk out of this place looking differently. There will be a new lift in your countenance. Psalm, I believe it's chapter 34, those who look to the Lord are radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their face. No shame. So tonight, if that's you, you'd say, man, Tyler, there's some shame, there's some guilt, there's some condemnation. If that's you, I just want you to agree with me in this prayer. You might want to raise your hands. You might want to just simply bow your head. You might want to grab the hand of the person next to you and say, hey, would you pray with me? Would you, would you put a hand on my shoulder and just agree with me right now because I'm going through this? Listen, this is what family is all about. This is what community is really all about. So if this is something that you're walking through, you're walking in, don't just face it alone. Come on, have somebody build up your faith and stand with you right now. You're facing shame, guilt, condemnation. Tonight, let's pray together right now. Jesus, thank you that your word declares if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, all things have been made new. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you that we're reminded that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray for every chain of guilt, every chain of shame, every chain of condemnation. Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you begin to set captives free. And Lord, even as we would walk out of this place tonight, that we would leave this place different than how we walked in. Lord, that there'd be a new freedom in our heart. That there'd be a new freedom in our spirit. God, that there'd be a new way that we respond and talk and act. Lord, I pray that as we begin to taste and see that you are good, that we begin to crave the true and the pure living water. God, for our unlimited neediness. God, we are desperately needing an unlimited Savior. And so, God, would you come? Would you rescue? Would you redeem? I pray, God, that you would remind each and every one of us tonight that we are in Christ. Our position is in Christ. No guilt, no shame, no condemnation. You have purchased our freedom. And so, Lord, we declare with confidence and with boldness tonight, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name we pray.